this new music that they're well not new the, this music um gives them life man like they are really into this song it's way better than the goofy being the elite song which is like somebody made on their keyboard uh but man this you know, is a real song people know the song it's not quite judas in that people are like singing it down to the ring but i think that is eventually going to happen but man this music is so great for them uh, so very early on, there was a CM Punk chant, and the elite immediately leaned into it. They're healing it up. The, I, this is this is through the John the Rocket lens here, but they overdo it so that it's kind of fake. And I wish they would pull back just a little bit. But the problem is, and the reason they don't is because the crowd, live crowd, eats it up for the match's sake and for their opponent's sake. I wish they'd pull it back just like just a little bit. Uh, they showed Penta with uh, George Kittle in Mexico City at the 49ers game, which was a great game. 49ers uh, beat the bumps off of the Cardinals. And Penta was there, especially after uh, he, he was very happy because George Kittle scored two touchdowns in that game. That is George Kittle's favorite wrestler. And so uh, they showed that on the broadcast. So Pac had a uh, Pac had a broken nose. He's wearing a face mask. A uh, match started with Omega Mad at at Phoenix, and he's pantomiming being hit in the head with a hammer. And my immediate thought was, "Oh yeah, you got hit with a hammer, and you're fine. You could you could you have a bandit a, a, a some sort of bandage around your head? Uh, but nope, he was just pantomiming, and you know they were they were being a little silly about it and. Uh, start of the match, I, it was really cool because there was a bit of a, a World Cup atmosphere to start the match. Uh, you saw that there was, I think there was a Mexican flag out in the crowd in, in the front row, and uh, the fans were were very into it. Um, even when it got silly, and it did, and it got sloppy in, in some instances, I still think uh, Phoenix missed a, a super kick by about five feet, like not even close, and, and they had to sell it. Uh, Kenny did the biting thing to th- to throw back to uh, Ace Steel. Uh, I think he bit Pac's arm. Uh, pa- pa- Pac's face mask was taken off. Uh, they hit the 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 trigger on him. Uh, then Omega hits a GTS on Pac for a two count. And Keely, he said, Here, and I have the quote from Sports <laughs> Illustrated. <laughs> This isn't Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks against CM Punk. It is people trying to show off their craft. You can boo Kenny Omega or the Young Bucks or CM Punk, but I hope people don't forget we're human beings struggling to show <laughs> our art. <laughs> that that I, I don't. I mean, I I'm I'm assuming he was he was he was working, but man, uh, so another sort of sloppy spot here. And, and again, this is through the John LaRocca lens. Cause he would have definitely pointed this out. So the end of this match is that Brandon Cutler is going to give Matt Jackson the hammer. I don't think we're supposed to know that Cutler has it, but he pulls it out like five seconds too early. So he pulls it out and I go, Oh, he's got the hammer. And he's trying to give it to Matt. Matt's going into the ring to set up the spot so that Brandon Cutler can unveil it to the camera and give it to him. But unfortunately, Brandon Cutler has already spoiled the uh, the, the finish here. Uh, gives Matt the hammer. And uh, the uh, then Penta also has a hammer, hits Matt in the head. And uh, the Death Triangle go up two to zero. And I wanted, now this would have been great, but someone who would have had to have been thinking on their feet. I wanted them to create a stat that said something of the effect, the team that goes up 2-0 in a best of seven series wins the series 75% of the time. Because <laughs> that's what they would do in the <laughs> NBA. Yes. Oh, I wanted someone to do that, but they didn't, you know, they, they didn't, uh, they couldn't. But okay, I, I, I gave the nuts and bolts. This was entertaining. It was fun. What were your thoughts? I was highly entertained. This crowd was incredible. I agree with you with the World Cup atmosphere. They were lively. I wish I was there just for the atmosphere alone. They were hyped, and that made me hyped for this match. And this match was the shadiest. (laughs) It was the most disrespectful. 
it was the rudest slap in the face to a person I've ever seen. Matt Jackson <laughs> he, fl- he <laughs> deliberately butchered and botched that buckshot lariat <laughs> and sat right down. <laughs> it was incredible. Kenny biting pack. Because you said this is healing for you, that we are not beefing with someone, <laughs> but let me bite the arm of someone that bit me two months ago. We have Matt praying like punk before doing a moon salt. We have Kenny hitting the GTS to add insult to injury. This was just so egregious and rude, but I loved it because they leaned into being assholes. And I respect that. They knew the game. You're in Chicago. You're going to get booed. But like we said at the top of the show, it wasn't unanimous hate. You got pockets of F the Elite, F CM Punk, go CM Punk. So it was very split down the middle. So I like the atmosphere of them not being completely hated, but you can still feel the hate. But the body of the match was really good. Ray was off in a couple of spots. He's always spectacular. And the Young Bucks are going to do what they do best, which is fly around, super kick, and be assholes in the best possible way. I loved it for the shade alone. I'm sure someone in Chicago was not very happy with this tribute match, but I don't care because I loved it. Okay, but here's a flip side to this. What they made me think was that he's coming back. That's what it made me think when they were doing all of this stuff. And I'm not, I mean, maybe, maybe he's not coming back. And, and I would sort of lean towards that possibility. But man, it sure did make me believe that in eight months, this dude is coming back and the elite are going to get theirs. Like, that's what it made me think. But that's just from the history of sort of watching wrestling. Maybe this is different, but... I don't know. Did you did you get that feeling at all? I felt like there is unfinished business. That's a contract that's worth a lot of money you're trying to buy out of and you don't want to gift wrap him to WWE whatsoever. That's like something that I wouldn't do if I'm Tony Khan. So there's money to be made. I'm going to try to make a deal. But at the same time, I think the backstage atmosphere is still a bit iffy. There are people that don't like CM Punk and they don't want him back. And I don't know if it's going to be enough to do a work shoot situation, but it felt like it wasn't over. But knowing the elite, this is just shade and they do it very well. And I I would love to see them find a way to work through this because I don't want that lasting image to be of Punk being pissed off at that press conference (laughs) and then have the fight backstage I don't want that to be his lasting memory. I want him to come back either for AEW or WWE and to have a palate cleanser to kind of remove the stench of that moment. But you never know in wrestling. We've had a crazy year, unforgettable with news and headlines. 2023 could provide that as well, depending on how this goes with CM Punk and Tony Khan's contract situation. 